In this video, I'm going to be giving you a demonstration on how to draw a still life or paint a still life using ink wash technique. I have my materials ready to go. If you need to see a review of them, please watch my introduction to ink wash tutorial, which reviews all the materials and gives you a few simple basic exercises to familiarize yourself with this medium. So uh, before you watch this tutorial, please watch the first part of it, the introduction to ink wash. Okay, I have my still life already drawn. I'm using a, I believe this is an HP pencil or a 2B pencil. I can't remember what softness of lead is in here. Um, and then I'm ready to start my painting or my drawing. Here is the process which you're gonna use, the steps which you're gonna use in order to create this work of art. You're gonna work background to foreground, background to foreground, big to small, so covering big areas and gradually filling smaller areas. And then usually simple to complex. So that's the order in which you're gonna do things. Background to foreground, big to small, simple to complex. So what is the first thing we're gonna do? We're going to wash in the entire value of the background, wash in the general value of the table. Maybe put in our cast shadows, our cast shadows before we start tackling the objects themselves. All right, so uh, we have our palette ready to go. In order to create a smooth ink wash, it sometimes helps to pre-wet the paper. It helps to pre-wet the paper. So that's what I'm gonna do first. I've got my large brush, my mop, All right? Uh, don't make this too wet, but cover the paper with a little bit of water, just a little tiny bit. You want it damp, not soaking wet. This is gonna slow down the drying of the ink and allow you to apply the ink a little bit more smoothly. Okay, so since this handle is black, I'm not gonna worry about it. And then frankly, if it goes everywhere, I can use my paper towel to control it. By the way, uh, my paper has a slight tilt to it. If you guys have seen the first tutorial, it's important to have the paper on a slight downward slope 10, 15 degrees, I've got my paper resting on a little pen case. That allows the washes to run downhill and keeps the washes from doing something called backwash. Right? Uh, sometimes what happens is as the wash dries, certain areas dry quicker than other areas. And then those wet areas start leaking into the dry areas, which creates all kinds of unevenness. Okay, so my paper, I think, is sufficiently damp. Sometimes it helps to look at it at an angle so you can see if there's any dry spots. All right, so I'm looking for any areas that I may have missed. Again, the paper should not be soaking wet. If it is, the ink wash is gonna have a really hard time drying. Number one, and number two, it's gonna create all kinds of irregularities. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down. Notice that in the image, there's a slight value transition, right? It's lighter here and it gets a little bit darker this way. So uh, I'm probably gonna start off with my, maybe not my lightest wash, my second lightest wash. And by the way, it also helps to have a little test piece of paper next to you to check the value of your washes. I can already tell it's a little bit too dark, um, but it's probably in between my very lightest wash and the second lightest wash. So I'm gonna mix up something kind of in between those two. Okay, uh, that looks pretty good. And let's start working our way down. It's important not to manipulate your washes too much. Uh, they are gonna eventually be a little bit uneven The more you mess with them, the more you try to move things around, the more uneven they get. Right? Uh, it seems a little bit counterintuitive, but you can't physically blend the wash. Allow the paper to do the blending for you. It might be a little bit uneven, but again, think about the fact that this is the background. Right? Uh, there's gonna be a lot more stuff in this still life. Right? Uh, a lot more objects, and those objects are gonna pull attention away from all the little irre irregularities in the background, and you're not gonna see this stuff. Plus, there is some irregularity in the background, right? It's not perfectly smooth. We've got wood grain there, which if we have time, we'll tackle. Okay, 
Okay, and then we have a little bit of leakage here. Make sure you've got a really nice paper towel to absorb all that stuff so you can control where the washes go. You're not ending up with something really sloppy. All right. Again, don't try to manipulate too much. Ink wash, watercolor technique, it's a little bit of controlled chaos, right? There's only so much control you can have, right? Okay, so, um, I think at this point, we probably don't have to wait for this to dry in order to start tinkering with this. Uh, we have an area here that's not pure white, right? Uh, pure white is only in a few spots, right here, right here. But this value is a little bit brighter than the value here. Of course it is, right? This is a white piece of paper, or slightly off-white, where this is some kind of light-colored wood. So here I'm going to use my lightest wash, and I think probably here I'm going to pre-wet the paper as well. right? Uh, so let's pre-wet it a little bit. By the way, you do not have to do this. You don't have to do this. And it's sort of dependent on what kind of conditions you're working under. So for instance, right now in my studio it's relatively cold and pretty damp. It, uh, it rained all of last night. So that's going to help the washes go down a little smoother. They take longer to dry. If you're working under very, very warm, hot conditions, right, some kind of desert environment, pre-wetting the paper is more important. Right, uh, you want to slow down the wash, allow it to move around a little bit more before it settles down and dries, which is going to give you a smoother effect. Okay. So let's see, all my paper is damp, just slightly wet. Okay, now I can start putting down a wash. So I notice it's a little bit darker here and gets a little bit lighter this way. Don't worry about cast shadows. We're gonna do those after this wash is dried. We're just looking for general transitions here. Lighter to darker here and darker to lighter this way. Okay, so we're gonna put down a value like this. Since the cast shadows are going to be entirely dark, darker than the value I'm putting down, we can just go over them. And then it gets a little bit lighter this way. Again, there's always going to be a little bit of irregularity. We're looking at only the background, only the table right now. So the imperfections are a little more noticeable. Let the wash do the work for you. Don't move things around. So I'm not moving, blending. Blending happens with the water, not with action of your brush. All right, before we start tackling the cast shadows, the details, we need to make sure that this dries completely. All right, that's gonna give us more control. Uh, once you get a little bit more advanced, you can work wet into wet and develop a degree of control. But for right now, when, as beginning artists, it helps to work in layers. Put down a layer, let it dry completely. Put down another layer, let it dry completely. Eventually, as you get better, you'll learn to control the chaos of working on a wet surface and moving things around as they, as they dry. Uh, for right now, don't do it. It's, uh, it's risky. And by the way, also, don't forget to collect excess wash as it builds up. So a little bit of an excess wash here. You can use your paper towel to collect that at the bottom. Okay, to speed up drying time, right? it really helps to have a hair dryer. Don't do this while the wash is completely, completely wet. It's gonna move the washes around. So you're gonna get beads of water running all over the place. So uh, once you see that the wash is kind of damp, you can hit it with a hair dryer. Uh, let's do that. And that should speed up your drying time. Again, it's really damp in my studio. It's really cold. This is going to help a lot. Okay, now this is dry. Let's add a little bit more value down here. Right, notice it's getting a little bit darker here. We have some kind of little reflection there that we can put down. Uh, but mostly I just want to get the sense that it's darker here and then also start putting in some of my cast shadows. So let's do that. Where is my large brush? And by the way, you always want to work with the largest brush that you're comfortable working with. So this brush can actually get me pretty far. It is fairly large, but it has a point, which gives me a certain degree of control. 
larger the brush, the smoother your washes are going to be. The smaller the brush, the more texture you're going to create. You end up putting down more brush strokes, having to move things around a lot more. It creates a slightly more une uneven effect. Okay, so in this case, I probably don't have to pre-wet my paper. Oh, that's way too dark. Okay, so let's just dilute that a little bit. And there we go. And then how do we blend? You guys remember, how do we blend one value into the other using water? So I'm going to dry off my brush a little bit and use a little bit of water to get a transition. And then here, you guys can see how the wash is building up. Right, uh, use your brush, you can also use a paper towel, to mop up the excess washes. Okay, there we go. All right, now let's put in this cast shadow right here. Let's do that. Okay, so I work along the edge, and then quickly, quickly, before this dries, don't let it dry. Clean off your brush and use a little bit of water. Use a little bit of water. There we go. Everyone, this takes practice. This takes practice, right? Uh, I'm moving very quickly. The more dry the conditions, the faster I have to move. So for instance here, right? Move fast. Hopefully that hasn't dried yet and formed an edge. No, it hasn't. It actually helps to work in kind of damp, in damp conditions. Okay, so while this is wet, I can go a little bit darker. So notice the cast shadow, as cast shadows will do. It's never the same value all the way through, right? So it's a little bit darker. Now this is a risky maneuver. This is a risky maneuver anytime you're working wet into wet. Dropping a wash into a wet surface, it makes it more difficult to control. So uh, for beginners, I recommend waiting for the first layer to dry and putting down a slightly darker value. But working wet into wet is faster. It's faster. I don't have to wait for everything to dry in order to keep working. Right? So uh, once you get comfortable working in layers, you can start working a little bit wet into wet. Just recognize that disaster can happen. Right? Uh, you can start making all kinds of mistakes, which are difficult to correct. Right? Okay, so let's put in the cast shadow of the pitcher and the apple. Let's start doing that. Okay, so here we have a soft edge. Let's adjust it a little bit. Okay. And then here we have a sharp edge. So hopefully you guys remember the lessons of light logic, right? How shadows fall on different surfaces. What are the properties of cast shadows? Well, when using incandescent sharp light or sunlight, cast shadows have a sharp edge. They have a sharp edge and then, you guys remember what happens to it? what happens to the shadow edge as the cast shadow moves away from the casting object, it starts to fuzz out, right? So here it's sharp. It's really sharp here. Let's make it even a little bit further out. And then here, the cast shadow starts to soften. By the way, notice that the shadow here, it sharpened up again, right? So pay attention to shadows as they're drying, or sh edges as they're drying, right? Uh, sometimes because the washes are going downhill, your edges will sharpen up. I'm using a little bit of paper towel to dry off this area so that it ensures that I get a soft edge there. So watch your washes as they dry. Make sure you intervene if they start going too sharp where you need them to be fuzzy. Okay, uh, there's a cast shadow underneath the picture here. So we're gonna put in that sharp edge, and then we're gonna make sure that it fuzzes out as it moves towards the apple. Work fast, everybody. Work fast because, especially with ink wash, right? Uh, more so than watercolor, you can't correct. Right, uh, I'm using waterproof ink here. 
Once it's dry, that's it. All is lost. Now, I will show you ways to make adjustments to values. Uh, there's cheats that you can use. Different ways of creating highlights where you've lost them, for example. But we try not to rely on that kind of trickery. OK. All right, well, what else should we do at this point? So we're always working background to foreground, big to small, simple to complex. We have a little bit more of a value transition here, I'm noticing, right? It's getting a little bit darker. There's some reflections here. Let's put those in before we start tackling our objects. So it's going a little bit darker here. All kinds of streaky stuff happening here. A little darker here, and then let's see if we can get a soft transition going this way. Again, the more that big stuff you get out of the way with your big brush, the easier time you're going to have finishing. Okay. All right. So let's hit this with a hairdryer. And now I think we're ready to work on our objects. Okay, so the process of working on your objects is very similar to graphite technique. So you guys remember in graphite, we work light to dark. So if we, was gonna if we were gonna shade this in graphite, what would we do first? We'd isolate the highlight and then very lightly put in something very light gray that's gonna separate the highlight from the rest of the lighter area on the apple. We're gonna do exactly the same thing here. Uh, before we do that, there are a few other little highlights on this apple other than the one here. There is one here, like this. And you can see that I also indicated, besides the highlights, I indicated the shape of my light brick. Again, if you're not familiar with that term, please watch my tutorials on light logic. And also, of course, uh, it's covered in the Introduction to Ink Wash tutorial. Okay, so I have the light break here. I've got my core shadow, I've got my reflected light. I have all the things I need for form. Let's separate our highlight from our light using our very, very lightest wash. Let's check that wash just to make sure that it's light enough. It should just be barely, barely, barely gray. So let's start here. And if it goes too dark, I can very quickly dilute it. But mostly what we need to do is just cover the whole apple with the exception of those few little bright patches of highlight. Notice I'm always working from the top down. We're trying to anyway. Okay, now let's let this dry, and now we're gonna apply increasingly darker values to start getting our shadows. So let's dry this out. Okay, so now it's time to start working on the shadow side of the apple. I'm going to mix up a value. Actually, I already have a value mixed up, but we might need to mix a few washes together. What am I looking for? I'm looking for something that probably represents the reflected light. Right? Uh, the core shadow I can put in later. But if I go too dark at the beginning and put down, let's say, the value of the core shadow, it's going to be very difficult to get that reflected light again. Actually impossible using ink wash. So you want to mix up something that's similar to the reflected light. So let's start putting that down. And I'm going to fill the entire shadow area with that one value. Again, I always have my paper towel at the ready in case the value needs to get lighter. But the most important thing I need to do right now is adjust the edge so that we have a soft transition. Do not let this edge dry. Right? Uh, do not let it be sharp. Okay, so the next step is to wait for this entire layer to dry. I can hit it with a hairdryer and then start applying the core shadow. You can also work wet into wet. You can also work wet into wet. So I can 
mix up a slightly darker value like this and then I can drop it in and get my core shadow if you guys remember the core shadow needs to be kind of soft needs to be fuzzy right and then if it starts leaking a little bit right I don't want it to go here I can use a drier brush to sop it up to sop it up a little bit see how this is starting to dry sharp don't let it dry sharp everybody right uh, adjust it use a little bit of water right uh, make sure that as it's drying that it never forms a sharp edge you can also use a paper towel to adjust your values right so so long as things are wet you can sop up a little bit of the value and do it that way right again the easier way of doing it is to be a little more patient and to wait for each layer to dry before you start going in with a darker value at the more advanced stages you can work a little bit more wetted to wet it's faster and ultimately it will give you better smoother results than working in layers it will but it takes a little bit more more skill right uh, working wet to wet is sort of controlled chaos right uh, really difficult to control the washes and make them go where you want make them behave fully okay so we're also going to get this little shadow right here we have a sharp edge on one side and a soft edge on the other side right so it's softer here sharper here so let's adjust the edge quickly before it dries there we go okay so let's let's let this dry and then we can start putting in a few little details here and there Okay, so let's keep working on the apple. We probably need to go a little bit darker in some places. And put in a few details. So there's a few areas where the core shadow has a little more texture to it. Why? Because this apple is not perfectly smooth. And at this stage, I'm going to put in a little texture, a little bit of texture here and there. smoothing out smoothing it out a little bit we've got a little bit of a core shadow here running along the bottom as any spherical object would have under these light conditions and then it's also time to start adjusting our cast shadow so cast shadows are sharper at the beginning they get softer as they move away and then they're also darker near near the point of origin Guys, remember where the objects touch there's an area called occlusion where things get really dark okay so it's going really dark here and then it gets lighter this way we have a value transition let's use a little bit of water to transition this darker value into the lighter value again cast shadows are never the same value all the way through keep the value moving Make sure there's always some kind of value transition from where the cast shadow starts to where it ends. There's a little touch of a darker value here. Okay, there we go. Again, as the washes are drying, watch those sharp edges, right? I'm constantly adjusting them, making sure they're soft enough. It's going a little bit darker here. Again, even this little area has a coarse shadow, has a reflected light. There's a coarse shadow running along the edge of the, of the light break here. Let's adjust it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so while we're here, let's adjust the cast shadow back here a little bit as well. It's going a little bit darker here and getting a little bit a little bit darker towards the corner All right where again you have an occlusion area where you have two planes meeting two forms meeting okay all right well we're almost done with the apple the only 
only thing left to do really is to start putting in a little bit of the texture in the lighter part. All right, so for this, we're gonna use that same very, very light wash that we mixed up at the beginning. Very, very light. And really delicately, really lightly, indicating the fact that the apple has some shifts in form here. Okay, just went a little bit too dark here. And there's a little bit of a half tone running right here, like that. Let's soften it on this side. Okay, our apple's also dirty. I probably should wash it, give it a good cleaning, maybe even repaint it. Okay, so this is more or less done. I could work a little more on it also, get a little more detail. Uh, maybe it could go a little bit darker in some places. But uh, I think this apple is ready to go, and I am ready to move on to this much, much more complicated picture. All right, uh, let's keep going. Now we're just going to keep working darker and darker and darker and putting in smaller and smaller shapes, basically. All right, uh, so we're just increasing the contrast, paying attention to the shadow edges. And then again, you always have two options. You can work wet into wet or let the layer dry completely and work wet into dry. Um, the second method gives you a little more control. It's much, much slower, much more methodical. Um, and doesn't often, doesn't always give you better results, by the way. Again, sometimes working wet into wet, even though it's more chaotic, right? You're controlling washes, they're kind of going everywhere, right? Uh, Sometimes working wet into wet will give you better results than being really methodical, really slow. And that's one of the wonderful things about this technique, is that uh, once you're skilled enough, it's actually a really fast way of working. Uh, it's really easy to get a full range of values, to get soft transitions. Again, the caveat is that uh, it takes skill. Right, uh, this is the hardest medium to control. Um, but I think as with all mediums that aren't correctable. Once you understand that mistakes are going to happen, they're kind of inevitable, uh, you learn to relax. And even if mistakes happen, there's always ways to not necessarily fix them, but uh, they're sort of part of the, the way the medium looks. So mistakes are going to happen. Areas are not going to be as soft or as sharp as they need to be. There's going to be leakage. That's sort of part of the medium. and. Uh, Let's put it this way, it's almost like part of the charm, right? Uh, the fact that there are imperfections, spills on occasion, right? things going all over the place. It's sort of built into the look of the medium, the fact that mistakes will happen, right? So once you sort of accept that, you end up stressing a lot less, and as a result, you get better work out of it. Um, I do a lot of work in pen and ink. Those of you guys are familiar with my channel. Um, I work in pen and ink a lot, uh, which is actually more difficult than ink wash. Right, it requires a degree of precision that's just greater. Um, and people often ask me, how do you avoid mistakes? And you can't, you can't avoid mistakes. Little by little, you make less, you make fewer mistakes. Um, however, they're gonna happen, you can't stress over them because if you do, it's gonna make you work worse. You're gonna get all stressed out, nervous, and then it's gonna, it's gonna make you screw up. Um, so, just accept defeat already from the beginning that you're going to screw up. Uh, there's going to be very few situations, unless you spill ink everywhere, that you're going to have to start over. Almost never happens, right? There's almost always some kind of workaround, or, okay, it's just there. That's the mistake I made. It's a record of my my flaws as a human being as a, and as an artist. Uh, it's just there. And it doesn't make the work worse. Mistakes do not make a work worse. Sometimes they actually add charm. Or you can find a way to make it look like, gosh, that mistake was not a mistake. It was actually meant to happen somehow. Okay, 
so we're just going darker. Notice that I haven't used my pure ink so far at all. At all. I'm building up things little by little. And really, that is the main thing you want to be focused on. You want to be methodical about how you work. And again, the key to really getting good control is having your palette mixed up correctly. Right? Uh, it allows you to not have to think all the time about what the values need to be. Constantly be mixing, remixing values. Right? Uh, that's the real shortcut, right? Having a correctly mixed up palette. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so at this stage, there's a few spots where maybe, you know, like the texture here, I can start putting that in. All right, there's some scratches, some areas where the reflection kind of alternates between sharp and soft. Let's see if I can get a little bit of that effect. Some scratches here and there. And hopefully you guys are seeing that this little picture is starting to take on a reflective quality. Okay, let's put in a few sharper details. And then it's gonna look really nice and reflective, nice and shiny. Hopefully. Okay, let's see my reflection here. At least I think that's my reflection. A little hard to tell. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's work a little bit here. So look, I can probably put a lot more detail into this. I'll work on this for the next hour, but for the sake of this demo, I think I'm pretty close to finished. Um, let's see. Here's my finished drawing. Unfortunately, a big chunk of the video where I was finishing things up got cut off. It froze on me. So I wasn't able to show you how I put in highlights and how I made a few little adjustments in value. But let me show you how to do that now. Uh, even though mostly what you put down is not correctable in this technique, you can make little adjustments. So for instance, if I want to make a value a little bit lighter, one way of doing it is to use a hard eraser. So you have to be careful when doing this, obviously. Right? Uh, don't rub too hard, but you can see that you can make little adjustments. So this might be good for eliminating a core shadow that went a little bit too dark, or putting in a little bit of a stronger reflected light. Right? So you can, can make little adjustments, be careful. Uh, make sure that you're going over something that's completely dry. Right? Uh, otherwise, ooh, that's going to be a disaster. Now, there are also a few ways of putting in little sharp highlights, which I used here and here. I think the easiest way is just to use a little bit of white gouache. So here's some gouache. And make sure that you clean out your water and you use a clean brush. And then you can use a little bit of gouache to put in your highlights. It looks fine. It looks a little bit different. Uh, it's not quite as clean as just trying to use the white of the paper. But uh, this is an effective method. And again, this is what I used on the reflection on the handle right here. Um, there is another way, uh, which is a little sneakier, which involves using an X-Acto knife to scrape out a little bit of the ink wash. You have to be careful when doing this. Again, make sure that the ink wash is completely dry. And then gently, little by little, you can use your knife to scrape out a white line. 
Uh, this is the easier method, but nothing looks quite as clean as the white of the paper. So while this might look a little bit different, right, people will be able to tell, aha, you cheated, you used a little bit of white gouache. With the scraping method, it's hard to tell. Right? It actually looks like you possibly reserved the white. Uh, limit this to only areas that are really small and really sharp. So be careful with this. Uh, you might eat your way all the way through the paper. Uh, but that's what I used to create a few of the little highlights here and here. So two little kind of cheat methods of putting in highlights, adjusting values after the fact. All right, guys, that's the end of the demo. Sorry, the last piece of it got cut off. Um, nothing can be done. The entire 20 minutes of this video got lost. Okay. Bye for now.